we are ready for you to let people in. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Um, thank you, everyone, for being here once again in one of our sessions for Education USA, Mexico. So before we start with our um, session today, may I remind you some uh, important information for you to be in our session today. I need to remind you that you are going to be muted and your video is turned off. And that is because we uh, prefer you to be um, in contact with us via um, our chat. You can type your chats in the chat box. You can find it at the end, at the bottom of your screen. You can find that little uh, sign that is, sad, is uh, called chat. You can type there to Magali. Magali, hello. We are going to, uh, she's going to be receiving your doubts, questions, comments, suggestions, whatever you need to communicate to us, okay? This session will be available on our YouTube channel later on. And this session is English closed captioned. That means that if you are having problems with your English, si estás teniendo problemas para comprender, seguir las preguntas o la línea de respuestas, you can activate the closed capture um, uh, application that you can find at the bottom of our uh, screen. See, you can see here uh, my, my face and maybe the presentation and you go to the bottom, you will find a um, menu bar. And in that bar, you are going to find this um, little sign, CC, live script. You will enjoy then the closed capture in Spanish if you are having problems understanding English, all right? So welcome again, let's start. Can you move on to the next slide, please? Thank you. Oh, okay, so this session, just a quick reminder, is a Hispanic serving institution session in our heritage, Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, it has been organized by Education USA Morelia, Michoacán, Education USA Merida, and Education USA Mexico City. And just before we start, we're about to start, I promise. I need you to remind, I need to remind you a small amount of information. Can you move on to the next? Thank you. Just before we start with the main information that uh, has uh, gathered us here today, I want to remind you that Education USA is a global network of advising centers from the US State Department. Um, we want to give you access to free resources to study in the US, uh, mainly your bachelor degree, your um, master degree, your um, doctorate degree, but we have available many other opportunities for you. Education USA targets students, higher education uh, institutions in the US and in Mexico, governments and uh, non-governmental -gov -gov organizations. We are a um, net of, uh, of uh, centers that are really for everyone. So if you know someone that really needs our services, contact that person to educationusa.state.gov. Let's move on. Okay, so for today's session, I want to welcome uh, our participants today and thank them for being here. They have, um, uh, they have um, prepared their presentations today, their, their experiences. They are going to be sharing their experiences with you just to give you another perspective of the experience of having uh, studies in a higher institution in the United States, but also on being in a Hispanic serving institution. I want to introduce and welcome Dr. Magdaleno Manzanares. I'm going to read his bio. He is Vice President, uh, Vice President of the External Affairs of Western New Mexico University. He studied a PhD on political science by Northern Arizona University. He has an, an MB and a BA, I'm sorry, uh, on international relations by Uni Universidad de las Americas in Puebla here in Mexico. He has an MA on political science and public administration by Sonoma State University. And he also has an associate of arts in political science of arts uh, and in political science by Santa Rosa Junior College. 
welcome Magdalena and thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Adri. It's a pleasure uh, to share uh, this uh, afternoon with you all from Education USA and with uh, Mr. Carlos Alberto Pineda. Uh, it's always a pleasure uh, to be among uh, those who believe that education can, uh, can help everyone to uh, make that leap forward when it comes to it. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you very okay. much. Let me introduce Carlos before we start this, this conversation. Thank you also, Carlos, for joining us today. Let me introduce Carlos Alberto Pineda Dominguez. I'm going to read his bio. He's Mexican. He was born in 1986. Oops, I'm sorry. I, I hope I'm not being indiscreet. He is an English professor, but he is also a French and Spanish language professor. Um, he has a bachelor degree on in gastronomy. He went to culinary school and he has a master on uh, educative technology. He is currently uh, enrolled in a um, higher institution in the USA and uh, this institution is a Hispanic serving institution. Hi, Carlos. Welcome. Thank Hello. You for nice, nice to be here with you. I will, I'm really thankful for sharing this experience with you as well and thanks for taking me into account. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining. Um, so as I was saying before, this is uh, the first part of our uh, session of our um, um, uh, event today is going to be our panel where Carlos and Magdaleno are going to share uh, in a conversation their experiences surrounding Hispanic serving institutions. After this panel, we are going to continue with our show showcase. In this showcase, a lot of uh, Hispanic serving institutions are going to be uh, serving, uh, offering information, specific information uh, about their institutions. What are the advantages? Why should you consider these institutions as one option for your future? Okay, so let's start. Magdaleno, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit beyond your, your bio and tell us what is your profile? Well, I, I was born also in Mexico and southern Mexico. Mm -hmm. For further reference, near, uh, I guess, Ixtapas y Guatanejo, a little town of you know, 1,500 people at this point. Um, but I uh, came to the US in 1975. Uh, came to, um, I went to high school in Northern California, uh, north of San Francisco in Sonoma County, actually. And uh, then I went to the community college, as, as Adri just mentioned, uh, where I went to school, etc. But uh, I also come from a family that, whose parents never learned how to read or write. Nobody uh, in my family, uh, you know, my grandparents and my parents never learned how to read or write. I'm one of 11, 12. Uh, kids in the family, uh, and um, one of three who actually went to college, and uh, and so you can you can begin to see the background, uh, my background, and then you know through uh, taking advantage of opportunities and people who has been have been helpful uh, to me. I, uh, I progressed in my education and also in my career. Uh, I taught political science for many, many years, and I have been vice president for the last nine and a half years or so. And uh, also while, while going doing my PhD, I, was, I taught for about five years in the same college, that, junior college that I went to a specific group of students migrant students, uh, children from migrant workers. Uh, and for those who are not familiar with it, migrant workers are those who go from one place to another following the crops, so to speak. If in a couple months, three months, they are picking grapes in Northern California, then they move after that to say, they go to the state of Washington to pick up apples in the Yakima Valley, et cetera, et cetera. So the children of those uh, migrant workers are the ones that I taught uh, in the Santa Rosa Junior College 
from Mexican history to Chicano history to political uh, movements and and so on and so forth. So not only my teaching has been in the context of institutions that create opportunities for Hispanics and everybody else, but also my own background and my own my own civic uh, uh, working and civic uh, opportunities. I I worked volunteer for the for the first uh, Chicano nonprofit radio station in the U.S. and uh, still uh, broadcasting out of Santa Rosa, California. So is a pioneer in that. Um, I also just for the heck of it, I I uh, trained a lot of people in radio production. I was in TV production. Uh, as as a volunteer, as given that, and some of those, some of those people that I trained a long time ago, are well known in the radio industry, in newspapers, and what have you, and and uh, and so that was part of my civic duty. Nowadays, I also am the president of the Center for Health Innovation, and we advocate advocate for access to health to those who don't have uh, much opportunities. Uh, I'm involved in so many things. Yeah. Uh, part of the Central Committee of the Democratic Party in New Mexico, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So okay. I, I give back to the communities and the society that has given me a lot. We can see this, the full circle with you, um, Magdaleno how someone starts receiving the benefits of this specified, very specific uh, um, type of institutions. And then later on, you have the opportunity to give back, right? Oh, I think we lost Carlo. Hello, Carlos. Estás por ahí? He's still there. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit? Well, Carlos is, as I was telling you before, a student that has just enrolled in a master's degree in a Hispanic serving institution. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Carlos? Sure. Well, first of all, it's my pleasure to be here and thanks one more time for the consideration. I have been, or I have had the pleasure to teach, to teach and to learn from my students, as I always said, for about 13 years today. Um, I taught French. Well, French was my initial, well, the very first language I started teaching and then English and then Spanish. And I was able to open a, a playful learning center in my hometown, Pachuca, before coming here to San Diego. I was working for an American school in the mornings. We followed the common core values and standards, and we also applied the, the educational system. Uh, of course, uh, the mandatory one exerted and given to us by the set. And uh, this way I could learn many different important and historical events of of both countries, Mexico and the USA. And that's why I decided to, to pick the master I'm currently studying. This is my second master's degree. The very first one I got is in educational technologies. And I also have a bachelor in culinary arts. I, I think that, I mean, it was live or, or the sequential education, the one taking me from a very initial step of being enrolled in, in a culinary arts bachelor and then I learned French and then French took me to English and things were like unraveling till I arrived to this point of, of getting this, the access to this amazing masters. And I think that's basically what I have done the last. Great. And how have you felt on the latest, uh, on the um, latest months that since you've uh, enrolled in your master? Uh, well, I have already had the pleasure to be here in San Diego for uh, many times, but as a tourist, so this, the city was not totally new for me. The university was a new one, but you know, uh, it's really good since they really do respect and acknowledge the influence of the influence local native cultures have in all this territory, in all this land. The Kumayai are precisely the ones, the tribe that or the the people that initially inhabited this this land before the arrival of uh, the pioneers in the mayflower ship and be, be, be before all these 
this uh, conquest process started and they acknowledged the, the, the rich culture we, I mean, talking about Mexicans and minority groups have. Uh, and I mean, I have been really good. And there is a, a word they always use. They always say family. And I think I have been part of that where I am currently being part of this Latin American or Latin family right here in San Diego State University. Great. Uh, and that is a key word, familia, right? Which is part of our cultural composition among other concepts. Maybe um, Magdaleno can help us with the following question. What do you consider, Magdaleno, after being part of uh, Hispanic serving institutions for so long, that are the benefits of uh, Hispanic serving institution? What is it that we call a Hispanic serving institution? And what are the benefits of this designation? Well, one of the benefits, uh, one of the benefits is that having that designation as an institution, it allows the institution to pursue funds from the different uh, government agencies. For example, from the US Department of Agriculture or Department of Education. Um, and there are grants, just to give you an example, uh, I supervise that office of grants uh, and we got two grants, one from the US Department of Agriculture to develop curriculum that has to do with agricultural innovations for Hispanic students. Uh, those who don't know or have not been involved in the different aspects of agriculture from the use of STEM, uh, science and technology, the application of it to accounting, to human resources. Uh, and you must uh, uh, understand that the USDA has, uh, has about 400,000 employees. So imagine the mammoth uh, chores that have to be done when it, the other one that we got is about $3 million uh, from the Department of Education because we are a Hispanic serving institution and those funds are allocated for Hispanic serving institution. In this case is to promote uh, our Hispanic culture, to recruit and retain uh, students uh, of, Hispanics, of Hispanic heritage in our university. And that goes for also sort of the international aspect of it. And so, that is one benefit in, at the institutional level, but in terms of students themselves, and perhaps Carlos can elaborate on this, but certainly it has to do with providing an environment that is welcoming to, uh, to Hispanics, to Latinos in general, uh, with um, advising, with courses that, are, that speak of the reality of Hispanics in the US. And as you all know, we are not new, certainly not in New Mexico. We, we are from the 16th century in New Mexico, just at the same time that Zacatecas, Chihuahua was formed, for example, long uh, before uh, San Francisco was created in 1776. So we were here 200 years before that. So all that is part of what a Hispanic serving institution is about. All in right. Let's, let's find out if Carlos has witnessed something like that. Um, is it visual, is it uh, noticeable that uh, being in a campus of a high um, Hispanic serving institution, all of these characteristics that uh, Magdalena just told us, what have you seen, Carlos? Yes, of course, uh, talking about well, precisely my master's degree is dual language education, literacy and social justice, and we analyze all the context surrounding Latin American cultures here in the USA and minority ones. And uh, I mean, I see it every day. On the other hand, when we talk about the university, you can see that, well, there is actually many different Hispanic or pre-Hispanic elements, such as, for instance, there is a chat paper, big painted papel picado writer that say, juntos, uh, we, we can make it but in English and in Spanish. So that makes you feel comfortable and that makes you realize that that institution is actually a bicultural one or one intended to support a minority Latin American communities. 
There are also, well, I mean, the soccer, the, the arena and everything related to sports is called Aztecs. So the, I also think that the football team is called Aztecs as well. And I mean, everything involves something related to a local a Mexican culture or Mesoamerican in this case culture. Mm -hmm. And they actually, they actually respect all that background and the, the vastly rich uh, history these okay. have yeah. for the arrival of, 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 yes, of course, of pioneers back then. Excellent, how interesting. I, I hadn't even thought about those type of uh, cultural expressions, right? Like the name of a team, the, the, the mascot they even chose. They are, I guess, trying to convey that. We celebrate and recognize your culture, your Hispanic heritage, right? Um, Carlos, why did you study to study where you are studying? Uh, did you find out that this was a Hispanic serving institution before or after the fact that you started studying there? Well, actually, it was after I decided to study about it. Well, I mean, to study and focus on, on Chicano children because, uh, well, first of all, I love teaching children. I have been a teacher to children of a all. I mean, I teach people from a very different cultural background, talking about age and culture, but I, mo I mostly focus on children, adolescents as well. And I said, okay, so I, I, I felt like I, like, I had something to do right here in, in order to learn about minority children. I also want to support LGBTQ plus children right here in order to, to be, uh, to accept who they are. And of course, that involve minority children such as Latin and uh, Chicano. And that's why I decided to, to, to pick this master, I mean, in order to help a Latin American descendants to, to get back or to receive back all that cultural background they might have lost because of the transitions of generations, you know? They, for instance, a, a parent arrived here and, and he was Mexican or he was illegal or whatever undocumented or the way you wanna call it, or maybe legally. And then uh, unfortunately that cultural background or that cultural richness gets lost when time passes by and one gener from one generation to another. So there needs to be a way for them to, to recover, to claim back all that knowledge and culture and to be, to know about the past and to know about their roots, actually. Yeah, and to have this identity as an advantage rather than a disadvantage, right? When you right. know how to write and read in two languages instead of one, that is definitely um, an advantage for you academically and in life. Magdaleno, you have already shared the characteristics and the advantages that a Hispanic serving institution has for Hispanic uh, population. Um, why don't you um, give a recommendation or just encourage people that is kind of fuzzy about their decision, maybe they're um, thinking this is too hard or they are going to be overwhelmed. Um, what would you say to invite people to go to a Hispanic serving institution? Well, uh, let me just preface that by saying you cannot escape that. You know, we are 62 plus million Hispanics in the U.S. For sure. And um, about almost 800 Hispanic serving institutions. Mm -hmm. 500 plus are Hispanic serving institutions. About 300 are emerging Hispanic uh, serving institutions. And so and if, if um, the audience of student or parents are thinking about, well, this this will uh, pigeonhole my, my son, my daughter into a Hispanic serving institution. We serve everyone. Uh, the difference here is that at least 25% of the student body is Hispanic. That's, that's, that's the bottom line. In California, you have over 170, 170 Hispanic serving institutions, which cover most of the Cal State system where Carlos is attending San Diego, where I went, Sonoma State is a Hispanic serving institution. All the Cal States in the LA area are Hispanic serving institutions. And you have the University of California at Riverside, just to say what, uh, is a Hispanic serving institution. You come to Arizona, the three public 
universities in Arizona, the University of Arizona, Arizona State, and Northern Arizona University are Hispanic serving institutions. You come to El Paso, you come to the University of Texas, El Paso, it's a Hispanic serving institution and so on and so forth. So if you are looking for quality from uh, certificates to PhD and nuclear energy, you will find it in a Hispanic serving institution. If you want to teach, uh, if you want to be an accountant, you will find that in a Hispanic serving institution, which is many of them, all of them, most of them uh, are very competitive in that sense. And so there is no, um, there is no way out in terms of, of that. Uh, and you should not be intimidated nor uh, feel that you are going to this sort of a special school where you're going to be pigeonholed, as I said, into a Hispanic serving institution. The quality is just as good as anyone. And you can find research one universities as well as teaching universities, as we call it, and community colleges, where you have the whole gamut of education from being a welder in, 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 in high uh, levels of, of industry, electric electricians in the big aspects of, you know, uh, there are some that have been welders in NASA, let's just put it that way. And welders start making around $80 an hour. So mm -hmm. that takes you uh, in that direction, as well as, you know, nuclear physicists and all that. So you will find all those in Hispanic serving institutions. So I encourage you to think about beyond the label and, yeah. and dig into those specific universities that you are interested in. And you will find out that there is no really difference in the quality of education between Hispanic serving institutions and non-Hispanic serving institutions. The difference is that Hispanic serving institutions will embrace you without any questions. Uh, and will embrace you for being Hispanic. All right, thank you very much. Carlos, would you recommend from your point of view? Yes, of course. I mean, it has been an amazing, a great experience to be, to be part of this Hispanic university. I mean, it's like a studying, but you know, you get culture, you get historical facts that you didn't even know that passed by when you when I was back in Mexico, I'm back talking about my very young culture. I mean, most of it, not all of, of the professors are clearly involved in the Latin American community. There is a huge support for us uh, related to education. I mean, I haven't actually felt like, like if it, it were home. It was quite good. It's quite good, actually. Excellent. Thank you very much, both. We have some questions on um, the audience, but I think most of them are going to be answered uh, in our showcase that is about to start. Jenny is going to show to to join us right now, and we are going to start our showcase in a minute. Uh, I just think that um, our panel has already answered Ophelia. What are the best options for Latinos to apply? for undergraduate scholar, oh, scholarships, I would recommend that you go to your Education USA representative, um, your local advisor. Uh, he or she will very, very easily guide you to find not only Hispanic serving institutions that, um, that offer the programs that you're looking for, but they are going to help you also to find a way to finance your studies. Okay, so thank you very much, Carlos. Thank you very much, Magdaleno. It has been a pleasure talking to you. And I'm going to pass the microphone to Jenny. Thank you, Jenny, for joining. Thank you, Audrey. Thanks to you. Yeah, thank you, three of you. That was great, great information to start today's event. Um, we're very happy. 
as you all know, or maybe you don't know, we are celebrating the Hispanic Heritage Month. It started on September 15th and it's going to end on October 15th. So that's why Education USA decided to bring you all these amazing Hispanic serving institutions that we have across the United States for you to learn a little bit more about them and also these amazing speakers that we just listened uh, sharing some of their experiences with Adri. So with this being said, I just want to uh, let you know a little bit about the logistics. We're going to have uh, different institutions that are going to be talking for 10 minutes each. Uh, they are going to be sharing about location, student services, what they offer, scholarships, uh, how can you apply, who can be your contact person, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So please stay with us. We're going to have a lot of them. And of course, since Magdaleno is already on the screen, we can start with <laughs> we can start with this university. So uh, welcome, Magdaleno. And we're going to start with Western New Mexico University. The microphone is yours. Just to thank Carlos for the the presentation and the and the information that he uh, shared with our audience. Thank you very much, Carlos. Again. No, thanks to you. It's my pleasure. Well, thank you, Yeni. Uh, I'll try to do my best. Uh, I have a PowerPoint here. Let me see if I can uh, share it, I suppose. Uh, where are we? Right here. Let me see if, is it sharing? Yeah, we're seeing it. Okay. Uh, bear with me. From the beginning, it says here, well, you already introduced me, and that's um, I'm Magdaleno Manzanares uh, from Western New Mexico University. You can see my email there, so you can uh, write it down, if you will, and if you have any questions after, the, after this event, uh, you know, whenever, uh, just let me know, send me a, a note, and let's start with this video. Stop listening to the music, uh, uh, Magdaleno. Well, that's just a, a, a brief uh, introduction to who we are. We were funded in 1893. La Universidad se fundó en 1893. Uh, we have more than 3,500 3, students, I'm sorry. And it's a small uh, rural university since, as you know, 1893. So, and we have offered classes ever since. 50% of our um, students are Hispanic and we are a Hispanic serving institution. In fact, we were one of the 18 universities that created the Hispanic Association of Colleges and Universities in the US back in the 1980s. Uh, classes, as you can see, are very small, 18 students uh, on average, 98 percent of our uh, professors have PhD uh, level education. Uh, we graduate around 500 
uh, students every year. And we have, you know, uh, representatives, if you will, students for about 18 countries. Uh, we have more than 70 programs from certificates to master's degrees. We don't offer PhDs. And we are next to the beautiful Gila wilderness. And if, um, if you're curious, you can always uh, research the Gila wilderness. It was the first uh, wilderness uh, so designated in the world. And there are about 3.3 million acres of virgin land that uh, is not allowed to be developed in any fashion to keep it in its natural form. Um, I will be quick here. Uh, in terms of opportunities at Western New Mexico uh, University, uh, most students receive scholarships. Now, if you are thinking about attending Western New Mexico, I'm pretty sure that you can find uh, some scholarships uh, uh, that will help defray the costs of coming to Western New Mexico University. We, I'm <coughs> sorry, we work in collaboration with other institutions throughout Mexico, where we offer dual degrees. Uh, just to give an example, the University of uh, Sonora, uh, we are working with them among other universities that uh, they send our students to us after they have taken about four semesters and they come to Western for, to take another three semesters. And we validate, we accept their credits. And when they get here and they finish the three semesters with us, they get their degree, let's say in chemistry. And they go back to Sonora because they have to do their social service or whatever they have to do for another semester. And so they graduate from, the, from Unison, from La Universidad de Sonora, with their degree from that institution. So at the end of the four years, the student uh, gets two degrees, one from us and one from Sonora. And certainly uh, the, one of the pluses also when they are here is that they hone on uh, on their English language skills. Uh, so they come out fully bilingual uh, out of the experience uh, it, with us. So that's one of the ways that we collaborate with institutions in Mexico, for example, among other things that we do. Um, so, you know, don't leave uh, the exercise of applying until the very end. Start early and you have obviously the advisors in Education USA that, that can guide you in this process. And uh, this is a picture uh, that you're seeing of our campus. Uh, in, in those hills that you see there, that's where the Gila wilderness begin. Uh, like I say, 3.3 uh, uh, million acres of land. And so we are lucky down south below uh, a few miles from there, the desert begins. So you can see the desert and you can see the forest when you are in Silver City. Silver City is located, uh, if you know a little bit about the geography of the US, is located right in between El Paso, Texas and Tucson, Arizona, except that we are in the mountains, not in the desert. Um, and talking about scholarships, uh, the cost of coming to Western New Mexico University in terms of tuition for international students is about $14,600 uh, per year. But if you qualify for a scholarship, you uh, can get a scholarship that will reduce that tuition in 50%. In 50 uh, and so you will end up paying uh, around $7,000 per year rather than the 14,000 plus. So that's one thing that can be done. Uh, you just need to um, apply, I suspect. And also in terms of registration, you can uh, register and you can uh, for admission and probably that application can be waived also. So that's briefly some of the benefits. We have a foundation that offers uh, a lot of scholarships uh, on different fields of study. So 
that's another avenue in terms of helping with the costs uh, of uh, getting an education at Western New Mexico University. And further information, Brenda Diaz is our international coordinator. Uh, her email is right there, and she will guide you from the inside here at Western uh, in the direction that you might want to go. So that's that's my brief presentation, Yanni. Thank you so much. Yeah, Magdalena, thank you. Thank you for this amazing presentation and um, joining our panel and showcase this evening. Uh, it's, it's, it's grateful to have you here. All right, well, let's continue with our next institution. Our next is the institution is Hillsborough Community College. Um, you should be able to share your screen if you want. Hello, everyone. Uh, um, one moment, let me see how I share my screen. Okay. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see it, go ahead. Perfect. Okay. Hello everyone, my name is Lisa Guadalupe. Um, I am the International Student Recruiter at Hillsborough Community College. Estamos ubicado en Tampa, Florida, so we are central to everything. Um, gracias a Dios that uh, Hurricane Ian didn't do any damage. Um, but I want to say happy Hispanic heritage. Um, voy a hacer esta presentación en Spanglish, so please um, just be patient with me. <laughs> okay, so what does HCC offer? So we are a community college. Eh, tenemos más de 160 associates degree. Eh, tenemos cinco campuses en el condado de Hillsboro. Um, in total, tenemos 43,000 students. Um, tenemos más de, eh, bueno, 36% de los estudiantes vienen de, eh, son hispanos. Um, so en cada oficina que uno va, vas a encontrar una persona que le puede hablar en español si uno se siente cómodo hablando en español. Um, ofrecemos apartamento de lujo, and we offer five, um, athletic sports at our uh, community college. So what are other support um, services that we offer? Um, we have our Learning Resource Center, which is our library that offers um, from free tutoring that you could do virtually or on campus um, to computer rentals, laptop rentals. Um, tenemos um, consejería, so if you are going through something, you can go there at, at no cost. Um, the Career Center, si necesita trabajo como OPT or CPT, ellos te pueden asistir con eso. Tenemos nuestra asesora académica, que también son um, your immigration specialist when it comes to um, your status or if you have any questions. Y lo más importante es el Centro de International Education. Um, that's where it's a one-stop shop. You'll find your admissions, you'll find um, your advisors, and then you'll find me, the recruiter. Um, so anything related to international, you'll find it at international office. Um, so, como todos sabemos, eh, un plan de estudio sólido y un entorno escolar de apoyo son muy importantes para el éxito académico y el desarrollo personal de un estudiante, pero también es la ubicación. So, I live in Tampa and I am originally from Boston and I love it here. Um, so I currently work at the Del Mabry campus, which is our main campus, um, which in front of our school is the Buccaneer Stadium, so donde juegan fútbol americano. Um, si conocen a Tom Brady, ahí está. 
Um, y al lado de la escuela, um, on the same property, tenemos los Tampa Yankees. So quieren ver eh, un equipo de baseball. Ahí está. Y tenemos otras cosas. En nuestro patio tenemos el aeropuerto eh, que queda 10 minutos. Y si quieren ir para la playa, 15 minutos. Pero si quieren ir para Miami, you can go on to the airplane and go fly to Miami. That's a 45 minute flight. Um, so I have my student on this call. Sofia, can you um, log on? Yeah. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Sofia Cobo. I'm an international student from Ecuador at HCC. Um, I enrolled uh, last semester in January to pursue an associate in computer science. And I'm planning to transfer to a four-year university to get a bachelor's in computer science. During my time at HSC, I've been participating in the Student Government Association. I also live at Hawks Landing Apartments, and I've been part of the International Student Ambassador Club. Um, I find HSC really helpful for me as an international student as it offers a great community and it's a great way to meet other international students, uh, make uh, friends, and you feel like you're really having this uh, great community and that you are part of something important, you know, that they are taking care of you because I also uh, research other universities, uh, colleges in Tampa, and I found out that HCC was the best one uh, for an international student as it has the Center for International Education. It has Hawks Landing, so you can really feel the support from HCC. Thank you, Sofia. And moving along, so why would you choose a community college? So, en un colegio comunitario, los estudiantes pueden ahorrar mucho dinero y puedes recibir la misma educación que uno puede estar en un four-year college. And these are just some of the points that we do have. Our class sizes do cap at like 25 students, um, but we could talk a little bit more other ways we can get into a smaller class size. So aquí está eh, el costo. So this is pretty much two semesters at HCC, what you would need to provide on your, um, your financial statement. Um, and this is pretty much everything that is needed. And if you need more information or would like more information, you could go ahead and scan this QR code and I'll provide more information for you. Ok, so en HEC nosotros compartimos un acuerdo de articulación con las 12 universidades. Um, so all the 12 Florida public universities, as long as you do your two years um, earning your associate's degree, you can transfer to any of our um, um, universities. And not only just the Florida universities, you can um, transfer to Um, universities within the United States, you just let us know and then we will have our academic advisors that will map that process out for you. Um, we also have a conditional letter of admittance. So that means once you apply to HEC, you are automatically at USF. And that's something that letter you could provide when you go to, um, to your consulate visit, say, hey, you know, I'm at HEC and I also got into USF. So that's pretty cool. Um, this right here, oops, this right here is the um, Hawk GPS plan where it pretty much shows you um, your map for your semesters. So you know exactly what classes that you need to take if you need to move things around and you know semester by semester. So mama y papa, ya ustedes saben that you have this as a plan. What classes are, are they taking? You can have a, a look at that and you can change your degree as well on here. So that's pretty cool. So what are the degrees that we offer? Nosotros ofrecemos el asociado en arte es para los estudiantes que se quieren transferir a la universidad. These are some of our top majors, but we offer, like I said, um, over 160 degrees. So you could just check us out on our website. 
tenemos nuestro asociado en ciencia, que es, eh, es, es your specialization, so you could go ahead and work right after. And then our college certificate, que son, si no quiere demorar dos a cuatro años, lo puedes hacer en uno a dos eh, semestres. Tenemos nuestro programa de honores que tiene muchas ventajas como becas. Um, so this is the best way to get some good scholarship money is to join our in, um, honors program. Um, as I mentioned, they do have smaller class sizes. Um, so instead of 25, you can get the 15 and feel like you're in like a private school um, with the community college costs. So these are some of the top institutions that our students have transferred out to, like Boston College, Stetson, University of Florida. Um, so these are this is an option if you are interested in that. So hay mucha manera en que uno puede aplicar a este programa, pero lo más importante is this one right here. I feel like a lot of students can take advantage. Maybe you might not have the SAT or the AC. ACT, but if you complete your first semester at HEC and get a 3.6, um, you could go ahead and apply. And if you want more information on that, you can go ahead and check their Instagram page for um, activities. Nosotros ofrecemos el OPT, que básicamente es una pasantía. Um, cuando uno eh, termina su asociado, tiene un año que puedes trabajar. Um, And then once you finish that, you can go ahead and continue on with your bachelor's degree y también el OPT otra vez. Um, so esa es la ventaja de, de ir a un community college porque tienes el OPT que lo puedes tomar not just two times, you could do it three times if you decide to do your master's degree. So como Sofía estaba hablando del Hawks Landing, estos son los apartamentos que nosotros ofrecemos en el Del Mabry Campus al frente que uno puede caminar 10 minutos antes de la clase, eh, siempre les sugiero al estudiante que eligen lo de cuatro uh, habitaciones porque tienen la oportunidad de conocer otro, otro estudiante doméstico y también internacional. Y the cost is right. Um, hay mucha um, amenities. Um, you have your own bedroom with your private bathroom. Um, you have your pool and you have your HCC safety patrol to make sure you are safe. So how do we get started with HCC? Um, well, today's your lucky day porque we are waiving our application fee. So you can go ahead and apply. We are, um, we have opened our summer and fall 2023 application. Um, so you could start that process up. You would just need your high school transcript, English proficiency, your copy of your passport and your proof of financial support. Um, and if you have any questions, again, you can go ahead and um, use your phone for this link, or you can go ahead and email or call me. But thank you so much. Thank you so much for this information, Lisa and Sofia as well, who joined us today. It's our pleasure to have you both here. Let's continue with our next guest. But before I go ahead and introduce them, just, uh, we Just as a reminder, we have uh, captions and our audience can choose captions in English if you know English and want to continue reading and following, or if you want to practice, uh, we also have um, subtitles in Spanish. If, if you're a parent or if you don't speak pretty good English, uh, you also can refer to captions and choose Spanish and it will translate for you. So thank you again and let's continue with our next guest. That's University of Central Arkansas. You can turn on your video. Hello. Hi. Hi, uh, my name is Libby. Um, Burks, I'm the International um, Admissions Counselor at the University of Central Arkansas. Let's see, is my screen sharing? No yet. No. Oh, wait, let's see here. It's ready. Okay. Well, thank you. All right. So I will be joined today um, with one of our um, international students as well. So um, where is Arkansas located? It's located to the northeast of Texas. Um, we're in the city of Conway, which is in the central of Arkansas. 
Conway is known as, or it's ranked as the second least expensive city in which to attend colleges in the US. Um, so it's a very affordable place to get a four-year degree. We offer over 150 degree programs. Um, 85 or more of those are undergraduate degree programs, and we have over 200 student organizations. Um, and let's see here. Um, UCA is one of the oldest campuses or public universities in Arkansas. Um, and it was also ranked as one of the most beautiful university campuses in Arkansas, according to BuzzFeed. Um, we offer more than 160 degree programs um, and more than 90 undergraduate degrees. Um, we have a low student to faculty ratio and classes of 16 students to one professor. Um, so we have really small class sizes um, that you might not get at a bigger university that have you know, 100 or 200 students in a class, um, our class ratio is much smaller. We have five academic colleges, um, the arts, humanities, and social sciences, business, education, health and behavioral sciences, and natural science and mathematics. Um, some of the top programs that our international students choose are things like business administration, computer science um, and um, nursing, film, music. I know um, a lot of our students choose those types of things here. Um, and for the students who might not have English proficiency yet, our university does have an intensive English program. Um, there's six levels of study from beginner to advanced. Um, each level, or each class is in eight weeks. So this is good for students that if you can't start in our like traditional August or January or um, June, we also have um, intensive English programs starting in October and March. Um, and so for this, um, there's no TOEFL score required to exit the IEP program. It has its own evaluation system. Um, the cost of attendance, like I said, Conway itself is a very affordable town to live in in the US, um, as well as our annual total cost of attendance for a student who chooses to live on campus is $22,150. $22, and so this includes um, housing, meals, um, health insurance, um, all of those things. Um, we offer um, some scholarships here for every student and for international students and out of state students. Um, we have an out of state tuition scholarship for those who choose to live in our um, residence halls or in apartments and that pays 100% of the out of state tuition so it saves you approximately $7,500 per year. Um, when you choose to live on campus. Um, we also have an international merit scholarship. Um, this is a competitive scholarship. So this is for students who have um, the required 3.25 uh, GPA um, and are, this is a separate application. Once you apply to UCA, you would also use um, a different application to apply to this scholarship. Um, and then we also have scholarships for students that are currently studying at UCA, um, and that is something like the Global Citizen Scholarship, and that has the requirements there. Um, so what are the admission requirements for UCA? Um, we require at least three years or your last three years of your high school um, transcripts. Um, the minimum GPA required is a 2.5. We do not require ACT or SAT, but you are welcome to submit those to help with your application. Um, we also need a copy of the passport, financial documentation, um, English proficiency if you're not applying to the intensive English program. And our deadline to apply for fall 2023 is July 1st. And let's see here. So we also have our website. Let me see if I can. So our website is uca.edu slash global, and this has all the information about our scholarships, um, the cost of attendance. Um, as you can see here, um, our scholarship for the International Student Merit Scholarship 
um, has the requirements, the deadlines, and um, where you can go to apply. Um, so over here at the top of our screen, we have um, the option to translate this page. So if you're wanting to read it in Spanish, you can go find it here and it will translate. It's a Google Translate, so some of the translations are a bit iffy, but it's helpful if you need that option. Um, and let's see, we'll go back to this here. And, and so then also we have our graduate student cost of attendance and um, the requirements for that. Each graduate program has um, certain things um, specific, so you want to check with the uh, department to learn more about that. Um, so we have more than... Um, oops. Oops. Okay, so we have more than 3,800 students that live in our university dorms and apartments. Um, and so, like I said, if you choose to live on campus, you get to save about $7,000 a year through that um, out-of-state tuition scholarship. And we also have over 200 registered student organizations with sports like tennis and soccer and other um, activities to get involved. And we have our student, um, Karen, if you want to introduce yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so I am Karen Orozco. I am from Nicaragua. Um, and I have been at UCA ever since my undergraduate. I graduated, did my OPT for a year, and then I came back to UCA because I love it so much. And I'm doing a master's degree now. Um, I also work with um, our international student office. So it is basically really, really good um, experience. And not only was I part of tons of organizations throughout my undergrad, but um, I was able to see and interact with so many international students that I get to call my best friends now. Uh, one of the top uh, student organizations that I was a part of was the Latin American Student Association or LSA. Um, and since it's Hispanic Heritage Month, there are so many activities going on every single day. Um, this is just a preview of all of the activities that they have going on. Um, but just being involved on campus and knowing that I have so many Latinos and Hispanolantes that are able to relate to all of the struggles of being an international student abroad, it is just the best feeling to know that I have other people that I can count on and just friends that understand that Latino culture that not many uh, people understand. So um, especially in Arkansas. Uh, so I, I've really enjoyed it a lot. There are tons of other organizations that you can be a part of. And um, I'll turn it over back to Libby. All right, Karen, thanks for sharing your experience at UCA. Um, let's see if I can move this. Um, so we also have things like the Hyper Center that's free to all of our students to use. Um, it's a recreation center with basketball courts and weight machines, um, a swimming pool, all of that. So that's included in your tuition and fees. We also have outdoor opportunities. Arkansas has lots of beautiful lakes and rivers and everything to enjoy. And we have the library um, with free tutoring on campus. And so Arkansas is known as the natural state. Um, and so we have many outdoor opportunities. And also at our recreation center, they offer free rentals with bicycles, camping equipment, kayaks, and other outdoor activity gear that you can rent for free from the campus. Um, and so thank you for listening to our presentation. Um, if you want more information, we have our social media links as well as a QR code. And let us know if you have any questions or need help applying. All right, thank you. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, and also Karen for joining this evening. And, and yes, we'll share your contact information with our audience as well. Uh, so I can see on the screen already uh, Shasta College. Thank you for joining us today. And the floor is yours. Okay, can you see uh, my screen? 
is charging, I guess. Uh, okay. Now we can, yes. Okay, let me uh, get this. Uh, let's, uh, hold on, let's make, I want to make the full, full screen. So let me see here. Oh, I'm uh, okay. Hold on, hold on. That's me. Yeah, I'm supposed supposed to do this. Sorry. Uh, thank. Uh, okay. Now we get to the uh, full screen mode. Uh, hold on, let's see. Uh, okay. Good. Yeah. You got uh, it. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Yanni. Uh, and the Education USA Mexico for organizing this important information session. So I would like also to thank you, uh, the student and parents for taking the time to participate in the events. So my name is John Yu. Um, I am a Dean uh, Emeritus from Shasta College. Uh, so I have been uh, in the California Community College system uh, as the professor and the, the, the administrator for over 26 years. So today uh, I'm we are going to talk about the Shasta College. Um, Shasta College is uh, a leader uh, in the California higher education system. Well, we received the innovation award uh, from the state uh, three times over the last few years uh, for program that helps students succeed. Now, where's uh, uh, Shasta College, right? Shasta College is located in a city called Reading. Uh, Redding uh, is in Northern California, which is about uh, 220 miles north of San Francisco, uh, about uh, 160 miles north of Sacramento. Uh, you can see here, this is the map of California. The, uh, the Redding is located on uh, I-5, Interstate, Interstate uh, 5, which is a major highway uh, that running from Mexico all the way to Canada. So we are located right on uh, I-5. Uh, we also have a small airport at Redding, uh, which have daily flight to San Francisco, to uh, uh, Los Angeles, to uh, uh, Las Vegas, and also to Seattle. Uh, the area uh, is known for its natural beauty. So Mountain Shasta, you can hear Mountain Shasta uh, and uh, Shasta Lake. The uh, Larson Volcanic National Park, these are all, all nearby. Uh, so, Reading has about a 90,000 population, which is a very safe place, a very beautiful place. Now, uh, about Shasta College. Shasta College is a two year comprehensive uh, community college uh, accredited by the Western Association of School and College, uh, which is the same organization that accredited. Uh, the University of California and the California State University system. So what we mean by comprehensive, I mean, we offer everything, right? So we we'll offer most of the uh, uh, majors, uh, for example, like engineering, business, uh, computer science, fine arts, music, uh, everything. So that's what we mean uh, comprehensive. We are uh, an important part of the California higher education uh, system. Uh, as you know, California have uh, three system, the, community college system, the CSU and the UC. So the three systems are uh, connected really well. So st student will have uh, be easily transferred from community college, college to the other two system. Now we have uh, over 70 years of academic excellence. So the college was founded in 1949, uh, offer 224 transfer degree and uh, certificate program. And we have over 12,000 students uh, on a 337-acre campus, which is a very large campus. Well, for those of you there, you know, the Howard University campus is about 337 acres, our main campus, right? So it's a big campus. Uh, now, I know you have a lot of choices, right? We have over 4,000 uh, college university in the United States, and we have about uh, 1,100 or 1,100 community colleagues. So why you should choose uh, uh, Shasta College, right? 
So here are some of the reasons that you should uh, attend Shasta College. Number one, we have strong academic programs, right? That's including two plus two with the University of California, California State University, and many other universities. So each year, our students transfer to over uh, 100 uh, four-year institutions that include, that's include UC Berkeley and UCLA. Now, the second reason is we have a low tuition fees. Uh, there are two parts uh, of the, the uh, low cost. Uh, we have low tuition uh, and fees and also have low cost living in the comparison with the San Francisco Bay Area, right? So our tuition fee, I'll talk about it in just a moment. It's only about 8,180. Uh, for the cost of living in the San Francisco area, you're probably going to pay 1,500 to uh, 2,000 for a single bedroom if you share with uh, another person. Where you live on our campus is only $450. So the other major advantage of Shasta College is we have uh, a dorm. So not many community colleges have dorms, right? Out of the 115 California community college, only uh, 11 have dorm. And the Shasta College is one of the 11 that have a dorm on campus. And you can live on campus just like in a foreign institution. Uh, we, as I said, we, we live in a small, uh, American city, and we provide a very safe and secure environment uh, for our students. So your parents, when you send your student to Shasta College, you don't have to worry about their safety. So we have a very, very uh, secure campus. Now, other advantage of Shasta College include, so we are small class size and easy access to, prep, to professor, uh, professors. So we have about like uh, uh, on average, probably have 25 or 30 students um, a, a class. Uh, well, if you attend some of the major big universities, some of the introductory classes is probably have probably 200, 300 students, right? So we have all the outstanding uh, st uh, student support. We, we provide free tutoring in English, ESL, math, business, science, and many other areas. So if, for example, if you take a calculus class, you have uh, problems, you have difficult, and you can go to our tutor center, center to find uh, help. And also, as I mentioned, our area, is this is a beautiful area. It's a, Nature Laurel Street, Mountain Shasta, Shasta Lake, Sacramento River, Bernie Fall, uh, Larson Volcanic National Park, they are all nearby. If you like, if you like outdoors, this is a perfect place. Now, the estimate co annual cost to attend Shasta College is like follows, right? The total, the tuition fee, as I said, is 8,184. Uh, the local uh, supply is about 1,000. Uh, and the room and board, if you live on campus, is for 9960 uh, And health and uh, academic, uh, I mean, accident insurance is about uh, 1360 These are estimate. And so the total cost is about 21804 uh, Okay, so if you can show us that you have this financial resource, 21804 and we can issue you uh, I-20 after admission. So this number, if you're going to apply for University of California, is probably be 65 or 70,000, uh, uh, right? Now, Shasta College also provide a scholarship. So the scholarship, we have three types of scholarships. Uh, one, because the foundation provide about uh, $3,000 for incoming uh, international student. And also, we also have uh, over 70 scholarship that for current student. If you come, come over here, you take a, a semester of classes after taking 12 units. If you maintain a GP of 2.0, you can apply for other uh, scholarship. And the other thing is that you can actually work on campus, right? Uh, international students are allowed to work on campus for up to 20 hours uh, a week, right? In California, the minimum wage is 15. That's mean you can earn about $300 uh, a week or probably 1,200 uh, a month. So that's quite a bit uh, of money. Now here are some pictures uh, that students have a good time. I mean, we have a lot of the funds, you know, uh, so students have many activities on campus. We have sports, arts, music, everything, right? So these are uh, some, as I said, that we have a burning fort, the waterfall there, and there's a student, uh, you know, on the Sacramento River, you can go outdoors, right? So uh, here are some of the contact information. So we have, uh, Cindy Sowa, who's our international student uh, admission specialist. So if you submit your application, uh, Cindy will be the person that answer your question will be help you. And she's very, very nice, really helpful. And Ryan Laffrey is our global uh, education coordinator and will help students to settle down and, and, and ready. 
And of course, I'm here to help you. If you have any, any questions about the Shasta College or any question about the California community, the community college system or California higher education system, I'll be happy to answer your questions. You have my email there, zyu at shastacollege.edu. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, listening. Thank you. Thank you so much for your participation and for sharing the contact information that we'll share with our audience as well. Thank you so much. And let's welcome our next university. It's University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Um, you can turn on your cameras and then if you want to share your screen, you're more than welcome. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Alejandría González. Soy una consejera aquí at UNLV, the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. So let me go ahead and share my screen. We can see it now. Alex, you are muted. Can you unmute yourself? There we okay. Go. I feel like every time I go to the screen, it mutes me. Let me go ahead and see if I can move forward and if it'll do something with it. Let me know. Okay. Still good? Yes. Uh, perfect. Okay. Um, so, les voy a decir un poquito de nuestra escuela aquí. So, lo voy a decir en inglés y en español, los dos, ok. So, otra vez, mi nombre es Alejandría González. Um, so, un poquito de nuestra escuela aquí. So, tenemos 800 estudiantes internacionales de 91 países, con 30,000 undergraduates. Y somos una escuela más o menos, you know, pues, ¿cómo se dice young? Joven, reciente. Reciente, sí. Um, comenzamos en el 1957. So aquí estamos, estamos enseñando también nuestra lo, a location de las escuelas. So aquí estamos um, de una hora de Mount Charleston, 30 minutos de Red Rock Canyon, um, 40 minutos de Lake Mead, 4 horas de Los Ángeles, 5 horas de San Diego y 5 horas de Phoenix. Um, some very important rankings that we have are we are the number one most diverse campus in the nation. Somos número uno en el país. So um, cada año siempre estamos en el top five uh, places as the most diverse campus in the, in the nation. And top 10 military friendly schools as well. We have 67% ethnic diversity within our student body. So you see that um, in your students, you see that in your professors, you see that in your city, you see that in your food, food scene, um, just about everywhere. Um, we're also, I'm going to show you a quick screen um, right here. We also have a designation as a, not only as an HSI, Hispanic serving institution, but we also are a minor, minority serving institution, as well as um, an Asian, American and Native American Pacific Islander serving institution as well. So that's how we're able to get that number one spot as the most diverse campus in the nation. We are also what's called an R1 ranking institute. Um, so what that means is that we have academic funding for projects that our professors are a part of, um, our students are a part of as well. And then here's a list of internships that our students are a part of. So NASA, Amazon, Zappos, Google, Tesla, things like that. And we have 300 undergraduate and graduate programs. So tenemos 300. Aquí está una lista pequeña. Yo soy un estudiante de engineering, o well, engineering slash business. Um, I'm getting my master's of science in cybersecurity. Um, otra escuela que muchos estudiantes van as, es the hospitality um, college. Hospitality college, we have the number one ranking hospitality college in the nation, number two in the world. Again, it's because we're here in Las Vegas. So that is a program that students fly all over the nation or world to come and attend. 
We also have the top five ranking, five percent ranking um, in engineering. Um, another one is we have the top nursing program in the state as well. So here's our admission requirements. So para que puedan entrar los estudiantes tienen que tener un 3.0 cumulative GPA. So the GPA debe de ser de sus clases de inglés, matemáticas, ciencias sociales y naturales. O the 1120 SAT or the 22 ACT. Cualquier manera de esos tres puedes entrar. Y luego nosotros para estudiantes queremos tener que tenemos que meter su aplicación antes del noviembre 15. So, si vas a entrar el próximo año, el Fall 2023, quieres, venir, quieres meter tu aplicación este noviembre. Y también aquí están los admission requirements, es el English proficiency. So, aquí está una lista que pueden tomar nuestros estudiantes para su, su examen de inglés. Lo que usan mucho nuestros estudiantes es el Duolingo English Test. So, es el más fácil, cuesta menos también, o el ACT, SAT, um, PTE, IELTS también. But the very common one is the Duolingo English test. Y también tenemos un programa que se llama el English Bridge Program. So si necesitan, como se llama, el ESL type of classes también, tenemos un programa que pueden tomar junto con sus clases que están tomando ya entrando así como estudiante de freshman or sophomore, junior, senior. Um, this is the IEP. This is the English Intensive Program también. So, estos, estas clases no te dan crédito, pero te ayudan con el inglés si lo necesitas. O te dan 20 horas de instrucción cada semana también. And no English proficiency submission is required. Y aquí es nuestra... Lo más importante, nosotros ofrecemos el alternate need form. So, para estudiantes que no pueden meter el FAFSA, porque si, si estás metiendo el FAFSA, tienes un social security number, ¿verdad? Uh, so, para estudiantes que son DACA, temporary protected status, undocumented individuals, antes del no, primer de noviembre de 2016, a los 16 años, puedes meter el alternate need form. Esto abre cada octubre, el primer de octubre. So, October 1st, this opens. Y quiero que lo meten este octubre, del fin del mes, yo digo, cada octubre. So, vas a venir el fall, el agosto 20, 2023, lo tienes que meter este octubre. Ya. Yeah. So, si van a entrar y van a usar el alternate need form, por favor, meten su forma un año antes. Y aquí te abajo te dice, funding is limited. Te dice eso porque nuestras becas, it, it was un tipo de scholarship, beca, el alternate need form. Este es dinero de nuestra institución. So it's not reported to the federal government. Por eso se tiene que meter muy temprano porque se va muy rápido ese dinero. Y luego aquí creo que el graduate admissions aquí va a entrar. Sí. Ahí. Muchas gracias. Sí. Eh... Bueno, mi nombre es Nayeli Olivares. Yo les voy a presentar la información para la gente que ya se graduó de licenciatura. Yo estoy como estudiante internacional aquí en Las Vegas, en la UNLV. Yo vengo de la Ciudad de México y estoy cursando mi primer semestre en la maestría de trabajo social y también estoy eh, trabajando para el campus. La siguiente, por favor. Gracias. Eh, UNLV ofrece diferentes oportunidades para poder financiar tus estudios, aproximadamente 5.7 millones en becas y ayudas financieras que están abiertos a estudiantes tanto actuales como nuevos estudiantes y esto es basado en una aplicación anual. Eh, alrededor del 76% de los estudiantes de UNLV reciben ayuda financiera. Ofrecemos más de mil posiciones de GA al año en diferentes departamentos de la universidad. GA es Graduate Assistantships, la cual requiere trabajar 20 horas a la semana. Y estas posiciones son muy competitivas 
ya que ofrecen un sueldo base entre 11 mil a 20 mil dólares anuales y te dan también tu seguro de gastos médicos, que es un requisito como estudiante internacional. También eh, ellos te apoyan con el costo eh, de estudiante internacional y con parte de tu colegiatura. Gracias. Los requisitos de admisión es eh, tener tu licenciatura concluida, un GPA general de 2.75. Si no tienes este GPA de 2.75, buscaremos en los últimos 60 créditos eh, un GPA de al menos de 3.0. Debes enviar copia de tu certificado de la licenciatura, todo el récord de todas tus materias, junto con una traducción al inglés. Y también es posible que se requiera una evaluación que acredite tu título en el extranjero o algún curso fuera de, de los Estados Unidos. Dependiendo esto, el programa en el que te inscribas. Y alguna prueba del dominio inglés, como Duolingo o Pearson o alguna otra. Ten en cuenta que el departamento puede tener requisitos adicionales, como por ejemplo una carta de intención, que esta es donde explicas por qué estás interesado en aplicar para ese programa, o algunas cartas de recomendación, entre alguna otra. Eh, ¿Cómo aplicar? Y inicia tu aplicación en Grad Rebel Gateway eh, y adjunta ahí los documentos. En cuanto tú escoges tu programa, ahí te va a decir qué documentos son los que se necesitan en específico para ese programa. Una vez que ya los tienes, eh, tus documentos en nuestro sistema, entonces ya vas a, a poder pagar la solicitud, que son 95 dólares. Y los documentos y solicitud deben de enviarse antes de la fecha límite de tu programa. Siguiente, por favor. Gracias. Las fechas límite en general eh, para estudiantes internacionales son de otoño, uh, el primero de mayo para primavera, el primero de octubre y para verano, el primero de marzo. Sin embargo, debes de tener cuidado porque cada programa luego maneja algunas otras fechas anteriores a, a estas que te estoy mencionando. Algunos programas solo admiten una vez al año. Así que debes estar muy pendiente de todas estas fechas de aplicación. Y bueno, si tienes alguna duda, aquí les compartimos nuestro correo y nuestro teléfono, tanto para undergrad como para graduate. Y este, pueden ahí mandarnos sus preguntas. Y finalmente les compartimos un video donde es un tour de la universidad. Pero no tenemos audio. Sí. Mm. Alex, ¿crees que pudieras? Ahí, es que no se escuchaba el video. Gracias. Um. Tal vez... Pues creo que se va a... Ahí está. Muchísimas gracias. Gracias. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much, Alex and Ajeli. And if you want to put on the chat the link of the video, we can uh, invite our audience to watch it later as well. So thank you so much for coming today. And let's welcome our next university. Just as a reminder, we have uh, captions in Spanish and English. You can choose them. And um, uh, we are coming to the last block of our uh, showcase. Thank you all for staying here and for joining us this evening. We still have three more universities who are here to share their important information with you all. So let's welcome Georgia State University. Um, you can turn on your camera, share your screen.
we are seeing it. Perfect. Thank you so very much. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Peace Lee from Georgia State University. Um, I wish I could speak Spanish, but what I did today is I tried to translate all my PowerPoints into uh, Spanish, some of them. I, so I tried. I did a presentation the day uh, before and which, you know, all in English and I don't speak Spanish. So I think maybe I can be a little bit creative. So if you see the Spanish here, that's not created or translated uh, correctly, that's Google, that's not me. So I tried my best. So let's go how I, um, you know, move forward. So first I wanna let you know, I don't know how I, can you see my screen better now? Yeah, we're, we're seeing it. Okay, perfect. So um, as you know, uh, in the U.S., we have over 5,000 higher education uh, institutions, and they are all over the state. A Atlanta uh, is where the home um, for Georgia State University. We're in downtown Atlanta, so we are urban, big, and fast, and upcoming. So if you're looking for a place that is not a small college town, that is offers opportunities, that's a lot of times that you can be go around um you know there are internship opportunity there are business engagement on campus and you can interact with students from over 130 other countries um this is where you can enjoy yourself so we are in the middle of atlanta and we're a tier one public research institution what had made georgia state unique i don't know why oh there we go Okay, is what we are new is for opportunities. Um, it, I hope this translated into opportunity. Um, that's for the students and for the research inside the classroom, outside the classroom in the United States and overseas. Um, we have over 11 colleges and, um, and schools and also institutions that offers over 250 degree and different majors. Um, for example, um, for our College of Business, and for finance major, we have three different tracks. We have finance. We also have a area called risk management and insurance. We also have finance for policy over at the international financial policy, which we know how important it is right now. Um, so that, uh, that shows you at Georgia State, there's a lot more choices, even within the same academic field, we offer the cross-disciplinary opportunity for our students. And many majors as well as programs are offer internships as well co-op for our international students. I have students right now actually working for a local company. It's a data science company. And she's making $16 an hour and working uh, part-time as an intern, but also can come to school. So once you graduate, you get your OPT, we have many international students with different major. Of course, I cannot guarantee if you graduate from education, um, but most of our students are top majors such as uh, uh, business finance, uh, computer science, uh, information systems, many, many of the schools, um, including our law school, a lot of international students are guaranteed to have internship that leads to the future career opportunities right here in Atlanta. Um, for the students who are the top 10 of the tier, um, I don't know why this is not translating, but um, hopefully I will you know, speak a little slower, you can understand. So the top 10% of our freshmen admit are um, admitted to the Honors College. The Honors College is a smaller cohort. Um, the students has a higher GPA requirement to get in. Also, the students are offered a lot more funding, financial aid opportunities as well. And the student has their own classroom taught by a elite team of faculty. And they also enjoy, once they start in one year, they can apply for the fellowship that is leads to a $10,000 additional scholarship. As well as when they study abroad, they will enjoy up to $2,500 um, for the program. Um, also, many of those like, honors college students get a university assistantship. That means we give them a monthly stipend for them to be able to live without paying the um, uh, room and board. For the students who are thinking coming to the downtown Atlanta as a major uh, campus, sometimes our tuition is about $24,000 a year for 12 credit hours. 
a lot of students think that is a big number for the family to afford. So we have alternative, which is our two-year uh, community college campus. So this is not a associate degree offering institution. Student can get an associate degree, but most of the international students, all local students wanted to start here because it's a smaller class size, it's a more flexible schedule, as well as they give the students more opportunities to be able to afford financially, as well as transition to Georgia State. If a student, we do not offer engineering at the downtown campus. If a student wanted to transfer to another institution such as Georgia Tech to study their engineering uh, undergraduate degree, they can come to our pre-engineering program, which is a two plus two guaranteed if they meet the GPA requirements. We have students graduate from our engineering program actually transferred to MIT, Arizona State, Purdue University, even Cornell. Um, so there are a lot of opportunities for the student to start the pathway um, at the primary college. So Georgia State actually is one of the unique university that we offer different level. We offer two year and four year bachelor. We offer master, we offer PhD. We also has postdoc research stations on our campus as well. So it's a comprehensive research institution. We are also division one in 16 different sports. Um, if you're interested, and this is application this year, I have made it very simple. So we are still SET or ACT optional, okay? If the student's GPA is below a certain um, like number, like for example, if you're below 3.2, uh -huh, we will require you to provide additional support. If you have SET or ACT and you want to provide in that, that will increase your opportunity to get a scholarships. We'll talk more about how much you will get a scholarship if you meet the eligibility criteria. So we don't require SET or ACT, but I recommend if you can, okay? And if you are willing, taking SET, ACT is very, very helpful for many international students for financial aid purposes. So if you are applying for the primary college, you do not want to apply as a freshman to the downtown, you can apply our internal, through the internal application, it's a slate application. What we require you are just uh, two things. One is your high school uh, transcript, official, or for those countries who have your final exam, you're gonna provide in that as well. And we're gonna require English proficiency. However, I know many students, I visit in Mexico twice a year, uh, one is I have a 18-year-old. Um, she studied Spanish and uh, just, you know, just enjoys to go to Mexico. So we go to Mexico City um, twice a year for vacation so she can practice her, her Spanish and talking to the locals. And one time we're trying to do a little uh, tour and then somehow I don't know how she translated. They're asking us for $50. And she translated to $5. We all happily jump on that boat and did a two hour. And the guy is asking for us for $200. I said, wait a minute, it's 20. He said, no. So, you know, her Spanish, even though she studied in the US, um, but definitely is not enough. So the same thing applicable to you, even you believe you study English in your middle school, high school, you speak perfect English. However, we still want some kind of a proficiency test to show not only you can speak, in, listening, hold a conversation, but also you are able to read and be successful at the university level, okay? Now, I believe this is talking about the, um, those criteria. So when you calculate GPA, you say, oh, you know, I'm very good at PE. All my P is A. However, we are calculating your GPA focus on these five different area. One is English, okay? We need your four-year English. So you need to provide in your year nine to your year 11, okay? Some of you are still in year 12 in high school. So we do not require you to provide it, but we need to know you are taking English in your year 12 as well. So does mathematics. We require the same thing and as well as the science. We do require social studies for three years or three credits and foreign language. Of course, if you speak Spanish, you study Spanish, that is for sure gonna uh, fulfill you for that requirement. And this is talking about deadlines, okay? 
deadline is important. Why it is important? Because that helps you to making sure you submit application on time to be considered if you want it to be considered for financial aid. Everything has a deadline. So our application opens on August 1st, okay? We started making decisions around beginning of October. So if you want to apply for the Honors College, and also we have a Presidential Scholarship, I recommend you to apply by November 15th. Of course, there are students who applied but couldn't provide the documents in time. That is okay. You can provide them until beginning of January, okay? However, if you want to come for the spring, the deadline is November 1st. For the fall, we have a, a, a much, much later deadline. The final deadline is April 1st. You wanted to apply for the downtown campus, that is the April 1st. And also you can submit your final document, which I just mentioned, your high school transcript, your English proficiency test, all of those by June 1st, okay? However, if you want to, again, to be considered for scholarship, don't wait until April 1st. Apply as soon as possible because the funding is provided first come, first serve basis. So this talking about scholarship. Scholarship is very important for our students, right? So many of you I know, you are a US citizen or green card holders. And however, you are residing in Mexico or another country, and you will be qualified as a domestic student for many other more. For international students, the major, major scholarship they are qualified for is the last one called Campus Atlanta. That is also the largest amount. That gives the students from $8,000 to $20,000 a year and brings your tuition. Remember, I mentioned tuition for the downtown is $24,000. That brings your tuition to about $9,200. So that is a very, very important scholarship for international students. Again, deadline is important. The requirement for the scholarship is 3.6 GPA, okay? If you don't have a 3.6 GPA, if you have a, um, ACT or ACT, we will consider them both. We will balance it out. So also, starting the um, uh, 2020, during the COVID time, we started another funding for our international students called the Panthers Retention Fund. We have almost 50% of our international students especially students are facing financial challenges, received $3,000 every year for their financial support. Even though you are international, you still qualify for that kind of uh, uh, financial support. That is uh, a blessing of our state and the government. As Georgia State is the most diversified university in the state of Georgia, we, we receive a lot of more additional funding. Um, also, if you're um, Hispanic, we do have some special scholarship um, specific for our Hispanic students, okay? So many funding are offered through the external foundations, business. As you know, Georgia State, located in Atlanta, we are the home to more than 28 uh, Fortune 500 companies. In the state of Georgia, we have over 1 million. I think right now it's more than that. So that's the eight. Since this number back in 2020, we have over 1 million Hispanic population. At Georgia State alone, we have 12% um, of our students where we offer great financial opportunities as well as student service support to specific our Hispanic students. So those are the ones that specific apply to the students. I do know many of them soon had to go through the external, but those are the website. I will also share this with Education USA. You can take a look at later as well. The other one is the lasso, uh, which providing the support for our Hispanic students in several areas to increase their academic success, their social career and leadership opportunities. And they have a group of pride of our Hispanic students and helping each other. They also have the largest uh, Hispanic Students Association on campus. They're providing almost everyday activities during this Heritage Month. And we see some on campus proudly showing off their culture. So I thank you for your time, as well as um, your patience to bear with me. I have this kind of 
dry cold going on right now, but it's getting better, but my voice doesn't sound 100% yet. So thank you again. If you have any questions, please post in the chat. I will share this PowerPoint as well as you can communicate with me. I'll put my email in the chat for you as well. Thank you so much. Gracias. Yeah, thank you for being here. Uh, that was awesome. And thank you for translating as well your PowerPoint. And so let's welcome our next institution. And it's North Central College. And I see you on the screen already, Priya. So go ahead. Welcome. Okay, hi. I'm going to share my screen. Um, are you, can you see it? Yes, we can. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Priya Shah. Um, I'm the Associate Director at North Central College. I'm very excited to be here. Um, and so I'm gonna take you on a very fast virtual tour of our campus. So this picture you see right here, this is the center of our campus. Um, and this is our School of Business and Entrepreneurship um, and our main building. And so you just get a little glimpse of um, what our campus looks like. Um, and then this is our team. If you are interested in uh, applying to North Central College, um, that's me. And then um, Annie Carnell is our international admission specialist. She is the person that um, works with students. She's a counselor. She will guide um, students through the entire application process. And then if they choose to come to North Central, she guides them through the visa process and then um, orientation. Um, and then this is uh, Kate Pope. She's the director of our English Language Institute. Um, and I will tell you a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. So um, North Central College is a nationally recognized institution. Um, it was ranked by US News World and Report as America's uh, best colleges. Um, it was also ranked in Forbes as one of America's top colleges. And Naperville, um, which I'm going to tell you a little bit more about in a minute, is um, ranked one of the best cities to live in America. And um, for a consecutive 10th year, it's ranked one of the safest cities to live in America. So it's the third safest city. So um, a little bit more about Naperville. Naperville is one of the largest suburbs in the Chicagoland area. It's about 30 minutes outside of Chicago. Um, we have a large population. We have about 148,000 residents. Um, and so many families, um, we have great school districts out here. So there are um, a lot of families and professionals that live in the area. Um, and many of the um, people who live here commute to Chicago for work. Um, we have a variety of restaurants. We have a really well-known downtown Naperville, which is actually just um, within walking distance of North Central's campus. It's right next to it, actually. Um, and it's a beautiful area. There's a lot of restaurants, um, shops, library. Um, and so a lot of our students go and spend time in downtown Naperville as well. Um, and then, like I said, we are just located 30 minutes outside of Chicago. Um, there is a train station right next to campus. It's about a five minute walk. Um, and so you can take the train and you'll be in Chicago in less than 30 minutes, sometimes if it's a rush hour train. Um, so this is a great benefit um, with North Central's campus, um, mainly for internships and job opportunities. A lot of our students can go to the city and transportation is not a problem. So many of our international students do do internships in the summer and they can easily live on campus and then take the train there. Um, and also our students like to go to Chicago on the weekends, they go to um, shop, go to restaurants. So you have a lot of access to a very large city. And Chicago is the third largest city in the United States. Um, and like I said, a great place to find internships and jobs. There's leading global, national, smart uh, startup companies, um, just a variety of uh, companies in any industry you can think of. Um, and we also are known for our architecture, our museums. Um, we have a variety of professional sports teams and um, we are known for our food. I'm sorry, my... my um, mouse is not working correctly. Um, we are a community of leaders at North Central College. Um, we have 2,600 students that call North Central home. Um, we have 134 international students that are represented from 42 countries. So um, we do not have, um, our international student population is on the smaller side. So we do not have like a, a larger group of one group of students from a specific region, um, which it, it makes it a very like global community. 
Um, North Central is a division three school. So we have a very large athletics program. Um, and so students can play on the competitive team. Um, and then we also have 27 intercollegiate sports that is open to all students. And um, our campus really values international students. Um, we love having them here. And 100% of our international students receive um, merit-based scholarships. And at North Central, one of the things that um, is a benefit, if you are looking for a smaller environment where everyone knows you by your name and you're never a number, we're a good fit for um, those people. So our average class size is 20. We never exceed 35 students. Um, the student faculty ratio is 14 to one. So um, most of the time, if not always, when you um, start your class, you will know your professor on the first day, your professor will know you, and you will know um, all your classmates by name, which is um, really important for a lot of people. 100% um, of our faculty have their PhD um, and they are doing research and our classes are only taught by faculty. We do have teaching assistants, but they do not teach. They can do tutoring and support in other ways, um, but it's very important that, um, that everyone knows that our, our classes are not taught by TAs. And we have over 90 um, plus graduation programs. Um, some of our most well-known is our actuarial science. Um, it's a really strong program um, where our students are finding a variety of different jobs in different industries. Um, it's a growing industry as well. Um, we also have a great sciences program, especially biology, chemistry, and neuroscience. Um, it, uh, there's a lot of research opportunities within these three majors, and many of our international students um, go on to do research with our professors. And we have two of the largest labs in the world in our area. So we have the Argonne National Labs and the Fermi. Um, um, also, we have engineering. Um, we offer computer, mechanical, and electric engineering. Um, we also have a great computer science program. Um, our psychology program is very well known, as well as our sports management. Um, and then we uh, also have a great school of business and entrepreneurship, where students can do their bachelor's in business management, which is a growing major uh, globally. And then we have the English Language Institute, um, which is a great program. Um, it runs in five eight-week terms throughout the academic year. Um, students who um, want to learn English at different levels, um, depending on where their level is currently. We offer um, classes with beginning to advanced levels. It is an intensive program, and the goal is to improve and learn academic English um, to set students up for success in um, whatever they may plan to do job-wise or um, continue with their studies. Um, and so we also offer conditional admission. So this is for the option to start undergraduate coursework um, while in the English Language Institute. So depending on students' level of English, you know, sometimes they may need one semester of English, um, academic English, and then they can go straight into the undergraduate studies. So we have this conditional option um, students who do the conditional admission can live on campus. Um, they have the true university experience. They can join all the clubs and organizations, sports. Um, they are a part of the campus community um, and they're just, uh, they're doing their English classes and then they can move easily into the undergraduate school. Um, we also have a pathway program, which is connected to our English Language Institute. So, you know, if you, for example, our required TOEFL score for a direct undergraduate admission is 79. Um, if you're right near 79, so students who have like a 72 to a 78, you know, you're really close, um, but you're not able to achieve that required score, students have the option to do the pathway program. So you can submit your in minimum English proficiency requirement, and depending on where your level of English is, you can start your undergraduate degree while finishing your English study. So for example, um, you know, if a student is strong in speaking and listening, but they may need some more um, guidance with their academic writing in English, they can do two undergraduate courses in, under, in the undergraduate program, sorry, repeating myself, and then two classes in the English Language Institute. 
Um, so it's a nice blend and you're already starting your undergraduate courses. Um, but keep in mind that you have to be within a specific um, English proficiency test score to be um, admitted into the pathway program. Um, and just so everyone knows, prior to my job right now, I was a teacher in the English language program um, and I've taught in many English programs and I will say that this is one of the best. Um, it really sets students up for success um, in their studies. And our international students are involved. Um, we have a close knit community that makes the campus feel like home because we are a small school. Um, we have more than 75 clubs to join. Um, students also have a lot of opportunities for leadership roles within the clubs. A lot of our international students are very involved all over campus, which is great to have on your resume. Um, and it gives you just more, makes you more competitive when applying for jobs. Um, and like I mentioned before, we have a lot of undergraduate research opportunities um, and on-campus jobs as well. And then um, our school offers a lot of international student support. So students are well guided. Um, you have an academic advisor that um, you know, puts you on a, uh, a studies of, of, of like all your course map and you can graduate on time. Um, and then with our Center for Global Education, which is um, a department dedicated to complete international student support, um, you also have an advisor within there that gives you class guidance and advice, um, support for working on campus, and um, does OPT and CPT workshops. And our international students are launching careers. Over 90% of international students are an OPT or employed upon graduating. Um, which is really great. Um, they're working at a variety of different, different companies. And this list here is just a short list. There's a lot more. And then um, we also, we have a lot of different resources on campus to give students support. One of the ones that we're most proud of is our Cardinal First program. First, it's for first generation students. 40% of North Central students are first generation college students. Um, and so there's a variety of different um, resources and events that um, help connect first-generation students to faculty um, and uh, different staff. And so they can help them with their experiences and give them um, you know, guidance in their academics and in their um, professional roles as well. And um, with our first-generation program, um, North Central College's program was um, named an example of excellencia um, this past year in recognition of service to Latino students. And so 15.7% of our Hispanic students um, undergraduate full, are full-time equivalent to enrollment. So um, we uh, do try to give a lot of support to our Hispanic students on campus as well. And the admissions process, it's easy. We try to make it as least complicated as possible. Our, um, you can apply, apply online, it's free. Um, and we have asked for um, official secondary school transcripts for three years. And then um, we ask for uh, proof of English proficiency, or you can select conditional admission, and then you don't have to submit a score. Um, we do not require SAT or ACT. Um, and then you can submit a letter of recommendation or a personal statement. And then we do have merit-based scholarships. So they are the scholarships are awarded depending on the GPA that is evaluated from the transcripts. Um, and so they range from 29,000 to 32,000. And then we also have the ELI to degree scholarship, which basically um, depending on how long a student is in the um, ELI program, so one semester or to a year, the tuition that you paid in those uh, for the e English Language Institute, that uh, cost will be paid back to the undergraduate program if you do conditional admission. So basically you're getting that money back because it's being applied to your tuition in the future. Um, if you are thinking about being a transfer student or going to a community college first, we do also have transfer scholarships. Um, we accept all international transfer students as well. And those scholarships range between 27,000 to 29,000. And then this is just a brief overview of our English proficiency scores. Um, and like I said, if you do take the SAT or ACT, we can accept the English scores for English proficiency, but they are not required for admission. Um, and then 
if you are going to an IB school and you are um, or taking IB courses or the IB, IB diploma, we do um, accept those uh, high level courses for college credit, which is great because then you can actually complete some courses before even starting your undergraduate coursework. Um, and then we can also, depending on your English uh, classes scores, we can waive um, the English proficiency requirement. And then if you wanna know more about um, our campus life, our student life on um, at North Central, uh, you can connect with us on social media. Um, I would strongly suggest uh, connecting on our TikTok. Um, it is completely student run. Um, and so they're always doing all sorts of videos to show um, different campus activities like homecoming, um, just all sorts of things that will give you a better idea of what our campus environment is. And if you have any questions, please reach out to us at any time. Um, you can email our international admissions email. You can email me, uh, it's the second email, or you can WhatsApp me at that number. Um, feel free to contact me through WhatsApp. I will be happy to answer your, any of your questions as quickly as possible. And then these are the qualifications for our pathway program. Um, I know this is a lot of information, so please feel free to email me and I can send you all the details as well. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Priya. That was nice information and we'll make sure to share your information with our audience as well. And so let's welcome our last institution of this evening and it's San Diego State University. Can you turn on your, ah, there is Edward. Hi Edward, welcome. Uh, the floor is yours. Did you wanna share your screen? Perfect, yeah. So I'm gonna share my screen because I'm having very technical difficulties with the camera so you'll see it turns white. So I'm gonna turn off the camera. Um, but I'm just going to share my screen with you guys. One second. And right, right after Edward is done, we'll have five minutes uh, with questions with the speakers that are still on the call. So just um, you can stay here with us and we'll answer your questions at the end. Thank you, Edward. Go ahead. We can see it now. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Um, so again, I, I welcome everybody. My name is Edward Murillo. I'm the International Admissions Advisor and Specialist at San Diego State University. I've had the pleasure to work with a lot of students from Mexico. Again, we are an HSI, Hispanic serving institution, and the majority of our students um, or Hispanic serving that we Hispanic students that we serve are from Mexico. Obviously, we're very close to the Mexico border. Um, Tijuana is maybe about a, our closest city here, and would be about a 40 minute drive from um, the border, and we also have the conveniency of Cross Border Express for those of you who have used that um, service before. It's very convenient. You fly into Tijuana Airport, you cross over to the U.S. Um, all through it, just using the airport. Um, so again, San Diego State University, um, we're very proud to be in this city. Uh, we are. Uh, we have a lot of industries to serve here, such as cybersecurity, life sciences, engineering, biotechnology. And again, as I mentioned, we're very close to the border, so we have a lot of trade going on here, being a great also industry for travel and tourism. Uh, San Diego is a very warm climate. We're about, we enjoy sun about 360 days, which is pretty much the entire year. Um, we're very close to downtown, the beaches, mountains, whatever you pretty much are looking for, we pretty much have it here in San Diego. Uh, we are the oldest university here in San Diego. We were founded back in 1897. I did see some older ones here, but we are one of the older ones here in San Diego. Um, we get about over 100,000 applications every year, making our university highly impacted, meaning, meaning there's a lot of students trying to get into our university, but we don't have enough seats, making us very highly coveted, very popular with many students worldwide. Um, we have about 35,000 students in total, 30,000 of which are undergrad or doing licenciatura studies. Um, we have about 97 undergraduate majors um, to choose from. And I'll show you the list of all of our graduate, I'm sorry, our undergraduate majors in a few slides. Um, to talk about, about our rankings, where again, we're the top 45 um, university for ethnic diversity. I did see that University of Las Vegas is number one, so we're up in the top 45. Um, but we are also um, very big for our international business program. We're ranked number eight nationwide. And the reason why it's highly popular and highly coveted is that not only students will be learning about the regular business components of accounting, finance, uh, marketing, but they also have to learn a second language and have to do a study abroad 
uh, term uh, uh, in the, either in the US or abroad. So if since your students are coming in from Mexico, obviously you're doing your study abroad here in the US. But if you want to be very uh, more adventurous, you can do your study abroad elsewhere, but obviously not in Mexico and not somewhere where that they speak Spanish. You know, do it either in Portuguese, French, or German. Um, we have various languages you can choose from. Uh, San Diego State University, we are uh, very big on research. Um, if you guys are very familiar with the CSU California State Universities, we have that um, people believe that we're not very big on research or more of a teaching institution. But at SCSU, it's quite different. We actually are a very different beast in a sense. Um, not only are we a teaching institution, but we're also very, very big on research. We just opened about five years ago our EIS, or the Engineering and Interdisciplinary Science Complex, um, where we house uh, all of our engineering majors, such as aerospace engineering, mechanical, electrical engineering. And we actually encourage students to participate in some of our engineering labs. We also have a student research symposium where we, again, encourage our students to present on any of the research they've been working for throughout, the year, throughout the year. And we also have the Bioscience Center for those students who are very curious in the biology and chemistry field. So here's a list of all of the majors that we have to offer here at SDSU. Again, our most popular major has been international business, as I mentioned, ranked number eight nationwide, but also whatever is within the in School of Engineering. So aerospace engineering, bioengineering, civil engineering, environmental, mechanical engineering, again, has been one of our top majors. Again, along also with our uh, business majors, so everything within uh, finance, accounting, uh, management, marketing, all within the School of Business has also been very popular. We also offer what are pre-professional programs. This is an advising program where we uh, prepare students for those that want to pursue careers in the medicine, legal, dental, or pharmacy fields. Uh, here in the U.S., a little bit different compared to Mexico. Students usually would have to get a bachelor's degree before applying for a, a professional school, such as medical or legal school. Um, but again, we do these pre-professional advising to help prepare these students to get into these professional schools. We do require our students to live on campus for the first two years. It's a mandatory requirement. The reason why we're doing it is that we notice the students tend to perform better academically, increasing their GPA from 11 to 13%, um, as opposed to those students who are, to are commuting students that commute. Um, so again, we it is a requirement to live on campus for the first two years, even though again, we're very close to the Mexico border, we do encourage students to live on campus. We also have different uh, what we call learning communities that you can participate in. These are communities where you can house with students in a similar interest or major, and you're actually earning college credits just by living within this uh, community. We have over 300 different student organizations you can be a part of if you don't want to live in a learning community. Um, these student organizations can range anywhere from cultural groups, um, professional development groups, or multicultural organizations uh, that you can be a part of, along with our, our regular student government. Uh, student life and recreation, we're very big on having students the opportunity to get involved on campus and live a very active student life. Anything from, for example, the Mission Bay Aquatic Center is one of our facilities near the beach, where we encourage students to get out there, surf, sail, and then earn college credits by being out there. Um, we also have our own uh, 24 hour seven gym called the ASIC Recreation Center, along with our Aquaplex when it gets a little warmer here, as well as our mentor advising program for those students who want to be mentored by a professional uh, to follow in their footsteps in the career track. As an international student, we do offer you guys the International Student Center that offers various resources such as advising for immigration, um, CPT, OPT, which was mentioned several uh, times during this presentation. CPT stands for Curricular Practical Training and OPT stands for Optional Practical Training. These are special permissions given to you to work in your in a particular field. The CPT typically is done during your uh, program, during your four-year studies. And is it, uh, it's encouraged those students who have internships to do uh, apply for the CPT and work in that particular field during their studies. 
For those students um, whose program that they select does not have an internship component um, built into the curriculum, we encourage them to partake in OPT, the optional practical training, which they would do once they complete their degree and apply for uh, jobs here in the US to be uh, to stay here for an additional year or maybe two, depending if it's a STEM program. Um, it makes the student more marketable, um, being that they have that working experience. Here at SUSU, not only are we preparing you theoretically, but we're also trying to make sure you're getting the, the, pra the practice as well. It's very hands-on training. Apart from the international advising, um, they also have similar mentor programs and weekly and cultural events that um, gathers you with other students from different parts of the world and gets to learn more about their culture. Uh, we did mention uh, the uh, sports, so we all have the, again, the aquatic center and the uh, arc, but we are also very big on sports. We are a division one school. So if you are athletically inclined and want to be recruited, they do offer our students athletic scholarships, but again, you have to be recruited to a team to be offered an athletic scholarship. Application opened October 1st. Those students who are graduating, we open application first, um, our October 1st. We'll be closing the application April 1st. Um, you would have to apply online on Cal State Apply, submit uh, an application fee, and also submit your transcripts and test scores like the TOEFL, IELTS, or Duolingo test. And the approximate cost of attendance, about $45,000. I know it's very expensive compared to the schools you've seen here, but again, we are very, um, uh, we're a very uh, well-known university here in San Diego. And this is a very, you'll get a very return, the return investment of our university is a pretty high considering we are again, a brand university. And I'll go ahead and wrap it up. I know we are pretty much out of time, but this is our contact information in case you wanna get a hold of us. Uh, again, my name is Edward Murillo. I'm the International Admissions Advisor. I work with students from Mexico and also those students who are international studying here in the US. So feel free to give us a visit either our, to our virtual front desk or fly into our uh, Tijuana and cross over. Again, it's a 40 minute drive from the Tijuana airport. We're very close and we'd love to have you guys here. Thank you so much uh, for sharing all this valuable information about San Diego State University. So since we already have some, we still have, sorry, some of our guests here. Magali, do you wanna share a question or do we have any questions from the audience that they could answer? Yes, thank you, Jenny. Just to make sure, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. The first question is open to any of the representatives of any institution that would like to answer is, why should a Mexican student apply? apply to a Hispanic servant institution? You are welcome to answer. Maybe Najeli, what do you, why do you think a Mexican student should apply to a Hispanic servant institution? Oh, I don't think uh, Nayeli is here with us. <laughs> Maybe um, Edward. Since... Sure. I, um, so I would say the reason why, again, is that we pretty much empower those students who that want to study in Hispanic serving institution. We see you, we recognize you. And again, we highly encourage you to bring your presence, your identity to the campus and show us obviously, you know, the force that we can be. So that, that would be my response to that. Um, this is Magdalena Manzanares. I will give you another staff a stab at, at it. Um, why shouldn't anyone apply to a Hispanic serving institution? Uh, just remember, it, it's not all Mexicans well, of Mexican descent that are in this Hispanic serving institutions. They are from a variety of uh, Hispanic Latino backgrounds. Yes, the bulk is of Mexican origin, but I think uh, to answer the question is that it offers a Hispanic serving institution offers uh, a series of, uh, of, of actions and programs that enhances the stay uh, and the success 
of a Hispanic student when it comes to advising, when it comes about uh, uh, some sort of language barrier. And sometimes you may have high scores in the TOEFL, but the nuances of the language and the culture, both academically and the community, are sometimes not uh, well defined. And it is not until you are here at the university and a university that embraces the nuances of culture and the differences. Uh, it's important to note that. For example, when people talk about GPA, well, what is a GPA? You know, son calificaciones, las mejores calificaciones. GPA may have some sense for some, may not make any sense for others. When people talk about NAFSA uh, or NAFTA, yeah, NAFSA, that, that's, uh, that's for American students uh, who are eligible to get financial aid from the government. It goes without saying that international students don't qualify for that. So you have to explain that to a Hispanic or a Mexican student. So there are a lot of nuances that are very familiar to us, that make sense to all of us, but it might not make sense to a Mexican student or even to a Hispanic student whose parents have not gone to college. So that helps a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Magdalene. Thank you, Edward. Okay. So um, any more questions? Um, we have one. Does having a dual nationality Mexican American complete that eligibility to international scholarships? It actually helps you if that dual nationality is Mexican, let's say, and American. It will help you with financial aid. It will give you, uh, you know, financial aid sounds bad in the Mexican Spanish. Te dan becas. El gobierno te da becas para que puedas entrar a la universidad. La beca normalmente cubre toda la colegiatura, a veces hasta la comida y la estancia. Entonces, eh, tener una doble nacionalidad, si es mexicano o estadounidense, te ayuda muchísimo. Yo tengo la doble nacionalidad. Tengo dos pasaportes. Thank you. I don't know, Mag, if you uh, are able to read Rodolfo Mondragon's question. I think it's a very interesting one. Yes. So our last question for today is, does your universities offer also graduate programs? We have heard about undergrad, but do you also offer graduate programs in your institution? Maybe if uh, the representatives are here still, they can react in some sort of way with the reaction bar to let us know which universities offer grad programs. Let's see if they're around still. Okay. And San Diego State offers that, and it was just explained. Western New Mexico offers uh, two master's degrees. So uh, graduate programs, as you know, are master's and PhD program and postdoc. Uh, program. So I know some, San Diego State does, and we do too, aside from the two that were mentioned. UNLV uh, also have graduate level programs as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Jenny, can we go to our info slide, contact slide? Thank you. Thank you for answering our students' questions. Okay. Thank you for joining us today in this session. We had a uh, great information given uh, given to us here. You can see our contact info. We have our email and social media pages. If you have any questions, please write to us in our email. Thank you, and thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Adri, for joining us today also. I hope you guys had a great session. Thank you to, the, to all the reps, and thank you all. Bye-bye.